we'll head now out of the Admiralty building. Absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, it's seen better days. Thank goodness I'm out of that wind. You probably haven't been able to hear anything, so I haven't, I haven't been giving a commentary up to this point. But today I am at part of the uh, old Saxaford radar station, the most northerly point of the British Isles, with the exception of, I think there's one cottage and a, um, a lighthouse beyond here. This site, a, uh, an early warning radar site, was constructed in the 1950s. Um, the old Chain Home 1940s radar station being at RAF uh, Skaw, just um, at the bottom of the hill. But in the 50s, um, a hilltop site was, was selected for the radar station. Uh, it was sold off in 2011, I think. Um, so it's now technically under private ownership, but but has just been left to uh, to rot and deteriorate. So yeah, on this video we'll be exploring the open remains of the old Saxaford radar station. This is one of the incredible entrances to the R101 bunker. Um, called a bunker, but technically it's above ground, uh, but a hardened operations room, operations center, uh, to run the air defense operations, really for the, for the northern part of, of the British Isles. Uh, this building is uh, locked and secure, um, and I haven't I think I've only seen one set of photographs from inside it. I think they were taken uh, when the site was, was being was opened up and had been decommissioned and was, was about to be sold. And it's it's very remote. Shetland itself being a hundred miles uh, off the coast of Scotland. Some sort of transformer room by the looks of it. And a very chunky three phase cable. You can see the different colours of the of the phases. You've got the neutral and you've got the the other phases. plinth in front of us was the SATCOM plinth, so the satellite communications uh, dish would have been mounted on top and operated from equipment inside. My long gone, the, the access ladder to the roof fallen on the ground. This, this R101 um, operations room, really formidable. Uh, built around the same time that a lot of the sort of hardened Cold War um, defences and, and airfields were being built around the country. Uh, 
I must say this site is very peaceful this evening. Uh, I've been in Shetland for a few days, exploring and hiking around. Um, I've already paid a visit to this site, um, but it was far too windy previously um, to take a video. Also, the airline lost my bags, um, so I didn't have some of my some of my kit. They've turned up two and a half days later. Sentry post. And lots of different phases of construction at this site. Starting 55, 56, I think some of the original facilities were constructed with expansion in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, this building up on top of the hill, this now three-storey building was built as a two-storey um, and it's known as the Admiralty Building. Uh, the Admiralty had a series of um, experimental sensors. It was an Admiralty experimental station. Um, experimental acoustic, I think, listening sensors um, out into the ocean, operated, I believe, jointly with the, with the, with the US. To detect submarines but I believe they had more luck detecting uh, schools of whales and dolphins than they did submarines. The, on top of the on top of the old diesel tanks. The station really being totally self-sufficient uh, just because of the of the remote nature. It's filled with, with these pits and ducts, cables running all over the site, power cables up. Uh, all the telecoms cables, phone lines, fibres, networks, all to keep the keep the systems operational. So yeah, here's the, the back of the R101 building. Quite impressive. Um, I think it had its own power generation, um, air filtration, so it was completely standalone. The emergency water tank here, just in front of the Admiralty building. Which we can, yeah, we can get inside. And what used to be a porter cabin. So you can see this this cable duct running all the way up the side of the hill, um, and that would have been up to the still still an MOD owned and operational radar station um, and comm site on top of the hill. Um, but this is this is the the lower camp. So a lot of these operations buildings were built um, down the hill because there just wasn't space on top of the hill to fit the the technical radar heads, um, transmitters, antennas and so on, um, as well as the operation buildings. So they were, I think it's about 35 metres um, in elevation below uh, below the rest of the site. This building in front of me is one of two transformers, electricity transformers on the site. Um, I think transforming the external power supply. Uh, I think this one was possibly built as part of that late 70s, 1980s upgrade. And then we have the original transformer building in front of us. Um, so yeah. I think I think this building is known as the Annex, which was an annex to the Admiralty building. Um, and then just in, in front of us here, which we can access through this this doorway, I think this was an R10 facility. So this was a, a part of the rotor radar system. This was an R10 um, operations block 
um, above ground, nothing here is, is subterranean. So this was not a above ground R10 ops block. Um, that was then superseded by the R101 um, when it was built. So yeah, I think we'll, we'll now venture, venture inside. Uh, I've got, got my torch with me today. Ah, before we go in, there, there are two of these on, on site. So this is the unloading bay. Uh, so there would have been uh, probably RAF regiment um, armed guard on site to protect the site against ground attack. Uh, and this is unloading bay. So there have been a bank of sand um, and when the guards are going on duty, they would load and unload their weapon systems um, into, this, into this bank of sand. Um, so in the event of a, a negligent um, or accidental discharge be captured in the sand. Um, unlikely, then the soldier would have received a hefty fine. Ah, and these. So, below a lot of the ground floor windows um, are these concrete plinths. So I believe what the purpose of these was for was so sandbags, in the event the, the complex had to be protected against ground attack, um, sandbags could be piled up, um, up on top of these plinths to protect the windows. Um, perhaps the glass would have been broken, sandbags placed up with a, with a loophole or a slit, um, so it, it could have become a defended building. So yeah, that's what I, I believe these were these were for. As I say, they're pretty much all of the um, all of the downstairs windows that you can see. Right, enough waffling and inside. I think I think this building, this I think, as I say, this was the annex was was built in the in the 1950s. Uh, great large large ceilings, paint paint peeling off. Very much a, an office block, office feel to it. And then the room that we, we entered in, I think, became a workshop. So there were some signs about wearing ear defenders. The floor has a um, sort of a, a rubberized machine shop floor to it. Uh, over here, looks like a uh, the base of a, a machine could have been with some, with some power and a light, uh, with a warning sign saying, make sure guards are in place. And same as in the corner, possibly a hot work or welding bay. It's a curtain rail on the ceiling, and that, that particular area has been has been painted black. So steel door, not not terribly secure, just steel. And down at this yeah, dead end corridor, which I think would probably have led us back outside. May have been one of the original entrances into the into the building. This is that's the the door to the offices we we were previously in. Uh, large cage here. I'm unsure of the purpose. Now making our way up into the Admiralty Building. Mats, all of these sort of silver pewterware prizes and tie codes. Unlikely silver. Uh, so the TTW store. Not sure what that means. So interestingly, in this room, and we'll we'll see it as we go up the floors. Um, so yeah, suspended loads, lift well. And if we look 
up in the ceiling we can actually see the uh, the trap doors and there's a there's a hoist right on top of the third floor um, for lifting machinery up and down um, all the floors are concrete so they're not not wood or suspended so presumably for for getting instrumentation and equipment to the higher floors Electric heaters. Into the kitchen. So a site like this, I'm sure, would have operated shift shift work for certain certain functions. It was an operational site after all. This may have been where some of the crews would have come to eat. Certainly a room with less damp than the others. Eerily quiet, as many of these these sites now are. So these are there the conduit security sealed RAF police. Looks like yeah, some sort of network equipment around the building and laser. So likely some sort of fibre converter from copper networking up to fibre optic. Into the stairwell, which I believe this was a later addition to the Admiralty building to bring it up to fire regulations there was only one way in and out so a fire escape had to be had to be built yeah, some original fire orders from the last time the site was operational and this sort of vandalism is somewhat pointless I can't can't really see a purpose for it Blackout blinds and the windows still working. So this wouldn't have been the original layout of the of the nineteen fifties Admiralty building. This is this is obviously a much later office design partition walls. And here I mentioned about the lift. So here are some of the, the hoist, stop, hoist, lower buttons with presumably the similar indication lights. Strange place for distribution board. And here are those trap doors for the hoist, which go right up to the third floor and down to the just outside the kitchen. So this would be the original stairwell, and this is how we'll we'll exit when we're finished. To the this is the third the top floor large open plan 
office, which will be filled with workstations, servers, equipment. And here is the, the large, the large Clayton winch. Not sure I'd like to power that on, but. So you may have noticed in, on some old equipment, you've got CWT or 100 weight. Uh, so 10 hundred weight is 10 times 100, 1,000. So it's, the, it, it's one ton um, working load on that, on that hook. Uh, but the, the safety plate has a, has a 0.5 ton working load of the pulley. Now that's a beautiful piece of switch gear. Which I can assume is for yeah, it's connect, connected to the to the up down button to the hoist. Mm. So yeah, the switch gear for the hoist. Very nice. Still in great condition. Wonder how long that'll last. So this door just leads us out, I think, to the fire exit. Which is to say, we're not not going to go down this time. Yeah, this is the the later edition of the fire exit. Obviously, not not built quite like the the rest of the building. So we'll head now out of the Admiralty building, and we'll head into the. I think the next stop is the R10 operations block. Got squeaky boots. Not more of this. This is obviously not the result of vandalism, but of deterioration of the and flaking of the paint. This is the R10 Ops block in front of us. But there's some offices here, it would be interesting to see. Some sort of equipment room. It's got a little circuit breaker. I've got three phone, BT phone lines. Laminated glass, you can see the lamination. Uh, lamination between the two layers. Pink curtains. There are a few of these boxes around. So I think these so roof units um, group, I think these may be to activate the air raid siren. There was a, there was a siren still in all of the, one of the flat roofs. IT coordinator's room. I think we can get in the other side. Yeah, so here's the IT coordinator's room. Really not much left now to tell us the use of this other than the sign in the door. Blue sector exchange. So a telephone junction box. So 
a reasonably modern looking network cabinet. Maybe put in early 2000s, late 90s perhaps. By Cogent, who must have run their networking. Personnel at the site were accommodated uh, in MOD owned houses uh, elsewhere on the island. So there was no barrack as such at, in the station. But as I said, it would have been a 24 hour operation. Not only radar operators, um, communications experts, technicians, um, RAF police, um, RAF regiment perhaps. Uh, so facilities like facilities like this were here, um, so they could they could have have some comforts, canteen, a uh, little rest area probably for the guard, what a TV and if any of you remember what a, a VHS video player would have looked like, would probably have sat in there. Now quite an imposing dark green colour to paint your rest area, but. So yeah, when I when I inside the the R10 block, now I did notice the other day that the floors here are suspended floors, i.e. they're not concrete. So I'm going to be reasonably cautious when I'm walking over I'm going to try and stick with the spars RAF station Saxaford in Scotland R10 briefing room booking forms Restricted document. How to how to operate and work the room. Yeah, briefing room. Some world country information on the boards. Yeah, intelligence brief last August two thousand and two. Ukraine tragedy, Air Force SU-27 UB, accident in their show. So last briefing in here, August 2002. And pictures of ships, most likely Russian craft, restricted images, no, Type 42. NATO naval vessels. So this is a authorized persons only area. Concrete base can only 
suggest one thing, safe perhaps. Maybe stickers with NATO stock numbers. 7110999103803 quantity 1 perhaps a final audit of IT equipment Interesting curtains. I don't want to don't want to know what's under that. Coming into a secure rack. for networking equipment. The forum store, as the note on the door suggests. Some more buckled floors. As with many of these places, it's I probably sound like a broken record if I say it's sound. It, there's no, there's nothing, no sound whatsoever. Electronic warfare is that aspect of electronics involving actions taken to prevent or reduce an enemy's effective use of radiated electromagnetic energy. A bit of a mission statement as to why they're here, I presume. Yes, but it's still unst. Ooh. Certainly a lot of nice 1950s-esque colour scheme and painted number. Telephone switch gear, or at least junctions, and electrical. Really, the only thing left here is the is the infrastructure. So this is like we're, we're going to come back to this. So this is out exiting the building. So I think this would have been one of the main entrances in to the to this R ten operations block. We are going to continue, hopefully down towards the entrance. Switch room. With a total contrast of original 1950s switching through to much later. 70s, 80s. And 
this, I can only assume, is the main, possibly originally two level operations room. Well, I said I'd visited the site before, I'd forgotten my torch. So, I haven't been down here before. Excellent. The R10 operations room at Unst. Which I presume became a gym after the movement uh, to the R101 block. the entrance. And here we are. This actually in fact was the secure entrance into the operations block. Card keypad access. I was thinking it may in fact have been a more secure area. But... So yeah, it must have been a more secure area. So this, this in fact is, is the entrance, this is the guard room. To sign the common alarm. Air Ministry contract, various warning lights, fire control panel, intruder detection alarm system panel removed, HV, so high voltage alarm panel, power failure or generator kicking in, I presume. Small little kitchenette areas, toilet, water, and here's the the hatch, the original entrance hatch. Uh, and here we are on the other side. So, oh, is this? This is the entrance to the R101 bunker. So they're connected by a corridor and tunnel, which you can see on the outside. And I have not been down here. And it may in fact access may not be possible. But judging by the dusty footprints, I'm not the first person to have tried. This is, this is exciting. Computer monitors, so it's not looking positive. Well, it's looking positive that people have got access, but not that it's untouched. This is this is quite a corridor. So I'll be honest and say I'm not quite sure. This must this must be underground. So above us are the transformers and that main corridor, main street. It's open. Here's that that heavy heavy door that we first looked at after the um, looking at the satcom. Plinth. Incredible. I was not expecting this at all. Oh. The 
plans. Sacks of fort. All very faded. Now this is phenomenal. Yes. Presumably one of the main radar operations rooms. MT, motor transport availability. The cars were parked. Battle damage reports. Now, very, very empty, of course. Oh, incredible. And the lights, shining the light towards the walls, suggesting that's, you can see, you can see the boards, where the boards would have been in the walls. Screwed into the walls here. This is genuinely a special, a special visit. A little bit jumpy, I won't lie. Like the polystyrene tiles on the walls probably aren't, aren't great in a fire. Restricted area room. Probably housing some restricted network terminals, computers. Secure door with a hatch. This room is definitely worse for wear. Engineering section, air conditioning on the roof. Possibly electrical networking equipment in here. Aria Buchan organization. So the data handling and comms section. Yeah, here we have the operations room. I think I can get to it. It's right here. Oh, this is vast. I was not expecting this. The operations room. This is genuinely an incredible surprise. Ah. 400 volts, three phase in. These are power filters on each of the phases. So to make sure there's no interference with sensitive or classified equipment. Air conditioning, air conditioning unit. So I have no idea what this room is at the moment. But I would imagine 
lots of servers, computer equipment, judging by what's been bolted to the floor. In perfect 1980s, brown and beige, everyone's favorite 80s colors. the switch room for the communication systems. I wonder, wonder how many phone lines came in here and went out around the site. Electronic spares. All this comms equipment. I have not seen, I have not seen this anywhere else. Secure cabinets, racks, network distribution. Genuinely remarkable. So I'm not sure why smoke machines would be used other than for testing the fire plans. There, racks, building, 1320 rack. Secure cabinets, racks. Her room system. I'm not, not familiar with Unitor. More air conditioning units. And all of this, I think it's called network flooring, is all it's raised. So, oh. Are these these air filters a water conditioning so there's a water tank there can of tenants because that's what people do Heating, heating system, pressurization unit. In remarkable condition. And here's another, an internal, oh, that's, that's impressive. That is one heck of a door. Now oh, is this just concrete? So I'm safe enough. Oh, this is the generator room. Ah, oh, wow. Seriously? R101 standby generator. I can't believe it. This is, this is, this is, this is a museum quality facility. Everything is here. But look at the doors. Huge blast doors with those greased pistons at the bottom. And that is the star of the show. That is absolutely incredible. Hammer and a spanner, and that would probably work. Obviously, the 
vandals have decided they want to cover it in paper. Batteries I can presume for starting as opposed to backup. And the ventilation, that is huge. Absolutely huge. Just risk it for a biscuit. Mm. Judging by the metal work at the top, I am not going to risk it for a biscuit, being on my own. But yeah, that's a that's a beautiful beast. So that's why this door is there. bags, crew room. I watched the date on this. 2002 again, September. So last briefing in August. People still working. September. Not quite sure what a buffer room store is. Just general stores. Oh, now this then. So we've seen the we've seen the heating room. We've seen the power generator, and this. What is this generator? So what are these? Maybe the control room the generators but I'm not sure what these three heavy machines are the ballast resistors which I think you put on the on the end of a, a rectifier you put resistors in the end of a generator if it wasn't under to create a false load so electrical motors standby gen self-regulating generator hmm so electrically powered generator, maybe to give you a smoother, smoother output. Getting in here has been an absolute pleasure. Unfortunately, it's seen better days. So now I think we'll make our way back up top and finish off some of the outside spaces. Oh, I still, I still can't, I still can't quite, quite believe this. 
So this is, no, when I, when I first, when I first came in here, I thought this was a door to the outside, but it's not because we're, we're technically underground here. This is door open in its open position. That door would have come closed and sealed off here to seal off the bunker or the operations block. Ah, oh, that's incredible. And this is walking up this, this long entrance corridor, just reminiscent of the, the rotor bunkers. As of, of course, this was uh, constructed after that stage. Oh, wow, that was a, that was an absolute privilege. So I promised we'd leave by a different route. I think it is here. So what, where we're going now is, we'll first have a look outside. It's still a lovely evening. So outside, this is the the outside of the R10 um, bunker. And up here you'll see this, this corridor. It's, basically, it's a covered walkway, it's a snow corridor, whatever you want to call it. But it allowed the lower side here where the operations were to connect without having to go outside in inclement weather, all the way up to where the radar heads were. And still are on the upper side. So and it, it does warn us that there's a microwave radiation hazard above the ground. And all the way along here, you can see this lifeline cord, which I think must run all the way up the stairs. Uh, so if you get into difficulty, pull that cord. Oh, and here we go. Right. Why is it? Lots of these videos involve stairs. If any of you have seen the video from Gibraltar, you know. I climbed a lot of stairs, which involved a little bit of me trying to talk out of breath. So I may skip this and zoom straight to the end. What an incredible evening I've got. So lucky for this. So yeah, for those of you interested in visiting Unst, the northernmost of the British Isles, it's an adventure. Uh, I flew from Birmingham to Aberdeen. Uh, four or five hour uh, we had Aberdeen, uh, and then from Aberdeen to Zumbra, uh, the Shetland uh, Airfield Airport on the southernmost island. From there, I hired a car and two ferries to get uh, crossing the island of Yale in the middle and ending up uh, in Unst. See, two ferries here. Oh dear. And this is where the, the covered walkway has been removed. And that's still the active MOD radar site. What it does do 
this gives us a great view and probably a good place to finish this video so here we have it the now abandoned operations area of uh, Saxaford, the Admiralty Building, the R10 operations block, buildings in the middle I think with the annex, uh, the circular cylindrical feature of the distance is the SATCOM plinth, satellite communications, and then just in front of that is the R101 operations block. Uh, that remarkably we got access to and yeah here we have the, the snow corridor leading up to the radar site on the top so thank you very much I hope you enjoyed this hour long video uh, and I hope you'll join me in the future some other adventures.